Hey, this is Pastor Jeff Daniel of Kingdom Light Church. Get ready today for a destiny molding, destiny changing, destiny impacting, and a destiny transforming word today. Because in Kingdom Light Church, you always know the truth, and that truth will set you free. Now, let's get ready for the word that will bring light to your life. God bless in Jesus' name. If you have your Bible this morning, go to the book of Revelations. Hallelujah. Revelations chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. God is good. Revelation chapter 12. Let's speak our reading from verse 7. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 7. It says, and then what happened? And war broke out in heaven. Wow. That's scary already. War in heaven. War broke out. Not fight. War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. See, it wasn't God who was fighting. It was what? Michael and his angels that were engaging in the fight. Okay. Then what happened? And the dragon and his angels. But what happened? They did not prevail. Nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. Mm -hmm. Verse 9. So the great dragon was cast out. That So first was the qualifying adjective for that devil. Number one is what? A great dragon. Number two is what? Aha, uh -huh. serpent of old, and then what? Call the devil, and then what? Wow. Who deceived? This is, this is the person that you are dealing with. Do you understand the kind of enemy that you are confronted with? It says, what happened to him who was cast to the earth? Amen? And his angels were cast out with him. Verse 10. Then I heard. Now this is the place that I really, really have an issue with. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven. Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has what? So there was no place to throw him. They decided... They decided that we are the one to deal with this. <laughs> they cast him here. But they were happy there. Look at the next verse. It says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. Verse 12. We'll stop there, I think. Therefore, heaven rejoice and those of you who live there. Read the next part. <laughs> so, <laughs> they were rejoicing over there. Then here they say, you guys deal with this problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but if you they don't miss verse 11 because they reveal a secret to us. Amen? They told us a secret in verse 11. So don't be worried about this verse 12 because if you know what they use to deal with him, you can use the same thing. Do you understand the, the game now? Yeah, just know what they used. And then they have given us the recipe. They used what? The blood and then the word 
of that testimony and then there was no place found for him. Amen? And guess what? It wasn't God who fought the battle. It was Michael and his angels. And the book of Hebrews tells us that angels are ministering spirit unto them who shall be heirs of salvation. So, everything that they used in heaven, God also gave it or released it to us. So, we can also use the blood and also use the word of our testimonies and also command angels to do the same thing. The problem is that... Um, The border between where angels live and where we live, demons are the customs and the immigration officers. Father, help us today in Jesus' name. You may be seated. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Are you ready? <laughs> so it means that uh, if you are going to effectively use the agency of angels to do this battle, you have to glean wisdom from a man called Daniel. And his story reveals to us that these immigration officers and custom officers they can really hold you hostage. That they have the ability to retain an angel for the span of 21, year, 21 days. And the 21 days doesn't mean that is how much power they gather to keep an angel. No, it was depending on the energy of the intercession that was wielded by Daniel. And then the angel that finally broke through, after he delivered the message, he told Daniel, uh, you are enjoying now. But as I'm going back, as they, you know, it is not just when you arrive in America that you pass through the custom. <laughs> the checking point is the same, coming and going. If you are a, a believer who don't know how to do a lot of intercession, angels may decide that, look, if they will let me, <laughs> so, sir, I don't think I want to go for this guy's assignment because <laughs> they can't pray me through, so, can you give me another assignment because <laughs> I don't want to be way late. You know, one time I was studying and, you know, if you are from Nigeria, you know way late is. But you know that's a proper English language. <laughs> yes. <laughs> See, yeah. It's a very proper English language, way late. <laughs> so angels don't want to be way late. <laughs> so you better pray much. Amen. But I believe that today you will learn something that will help you. Media department, do you have my video ready? Are we ready? All right. Look at this picture here. Hallelujah. In my study, I discovered something. Hallelujah. That old serpent is a very terrible being. That's fine. Some people are already scared. <laughs> I did my study, I discovered something very scary about the snake. And that's why I want to talk to us today about the power of the blood of Jesus, how you need to warfare 
with the blood of Jesus. You see, when you are a child of God, you must understand you are a very peculiar person. You are an endangered species. Just you have to know that. That's why growth is necessary. When you gave your life to Jesus Christ, automatically you entered into warfare. And you became an endangered species. So if you are not growing, you will keep groaning in life because there is a devil that the Bible identifies as the great dragon, that old serpent, the devil, and Satan, the one who deceived the whole world. He is an accuser of the brethren. And so you have to understand his assignment has never changed. And he can't improve his resume because the Bible says he has come to steal, kill, and destroy. And that is what he specializes in doing. And so what he does is that he does not just wait until you become somebody because the devil hates for you to mature. And that the picture you saw is the activity of this dragon that he has the capacity to swallow the eggs. And the egg is a premature state of a being. Are, are you with me? So the devil does not want you to grow. He doesn't want you to mature. The devil does not want you to break through. The devil does not want you to become your destiny. Your potential, the devil has the capacity to swallow it before it becomes anything. The devil is so smart, he doesn't want to wait because he knows. In my study, I discover there's a particular species of snakes that they love only the eggs of eagles. So that snake will climb any mountain, will climb any tree to locate the eggs of an eagle because he knows that eagle is an enemy to her. If he allows the egg to become an eaglet and grow to become an eagle, that eagle becomes a trouble in the life of that snake. So what that snake does is that before that eagle become anything, I swallow up. Your dream might have been swallowed up. If you are not careful, the devil can swallow your potential and leave you with carcass. The devil can swallow your confidence. The devil can swallow your possibilities. The devil can swallow everything the devil is doing in your life around you. His intentions is that if you can't get it at a premature state, because those eggs were so helpless. And some of us, except for the mercies of God, the possibility of spiritual conception to become that destiny is being given up because the devil has joined into the womb of your spirit and I've taken that egg. But today, by the blood of Jesus Christ, whatever he stole will be restored in the name of Jesus Christ. And there was a time there was so much confidence in you. There was a time you were so hopeful. There was a time you knew you would take the war, but somehow, now you can't find it. It is possible that the devil did damage to the core of your being. He's an old serpent. You see, he's older than all of us here. <laughs> he has an advantage of age. He has advantage of knowledge. Remember, his name was the son of the morning. His contention was not with God. His contention was to take the place of the Christ because he was a light bearer. That was the job of Satan. His intention. If you read this account in Revelation chapter 12 where we read from beginning, you will discover that he wanted to swallow up Jesus Christ from the womb. If you read it, you will discover the whole wrath of Satan is because he wanted to sit at the right hand of majesty. That is his goal. So the Bible says, when this incident happened, if you give me NIV, you will locate where it says, the woman that was pregnant was taken away and was hidden for a thousand 
260 days. Two, is that correct? Give me NRV Revelation chapter 12, maybe verse 5 and 6. Let's see. And those of you who went to school that is not nice school like mine, I want you to divide this number with three years, uh, with 365 days, and let's see. NRV. Okay. Can you divide that figure 1260 by 365? Let's see what it comes up. How much? Three point equivalent to three and a half years. How many years does Jesus do ministry? So the old goal was to swallow up that baby and his intention was that the ministry of Jesus Christ will not be accomplished. Are you here? The devil, the Bible reveals to us in the book of Revelation that he is the one that peeps. Amen? The devil peeps at destinies. He peeps at destinies. When he peeps at your destiny, I told you media people, anytime I say words like that, begin to Google search. I know you people know how to Google search all the time. So can you help me today? In the book of Isaiah, either chapter 7 or chapter 8, you will find the word in the King James, he peeps, the one that peeps. Let's look at that scripture and let's see so that you will know something. It will help you a lot. I want you to know that when they wanted to kill baby Jesus, Satan didn't know. It was the astrologers. They had to find a way. Herod was not aware. The Bible says they peep. Have you people found the word peep yet in the book of Isaiah? They peep into their destiny and discover that a king was going to be born. When they knew that, then they said, okay, since the devil only peeps and doesn't know details, what we will do is, let's make sure from age two downward, let's kill all the babies. There are many people who died innocently just because Satan is looking for a particular child. There are many businesses that have shut down, not because the devil intended to destroy that, but there's one the devil is looking at. There are man, many marriages that are victims of satanic oppression, not because they didn't have what it takes to hold the marriage. No, Satan is trying to locate a particular one. Are we there yet? Okay, good. And when they shall say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that do what? Uh-huh. You know, when you're watching a movie, somebody can peep. Would they know the whole thing about the movie? Uh -huh. They just know the little scene that they looked at. That's how Satan, Satan can peep at your destiny. And once he sees something big in it, he begins to organize meetings in order to siphon and demolish and destroy that destiny. You got to be a watchman over your life and your destiny. And the Bible reveals to us we have the weapons required. You see, you have to love your destiny so much that nothing else will mean much to you than your destiny. Because in your destiny, God has factored in everything that will make you that thing you are dreaming and wishing you get in life. Everything in life is programmed into your destiny. Don't let the devil cheat you out of what is meaningful and give you a substitute. Many people are operating with a substitute. No. God has great things for us and he programmed great things for us. You can't allow that devil to swallow. Sometimes it begins with a little baby and now in this generation they are telling us that you have to have license at age 15, 16 to drive. You have to have license at this age or that age in order to buy cigarette or alcohol. But it is okay for a five-year-old to tell us that I'm a girl or I'm a boy. 
Do you understand the evil generation we're in? How much we're dealing with that is so amazing that I don't have to be an astronaut to know that this is absolute foolishness that I will need to grow to a certain age to be able to drive. But at age five, I can decide my sex. The Bible says, just like in the days of Noah, we are in the days of Noah. Evil is being magnified. Every child of God must understand the magnitude of satanic oppression in our time and take their life very serious. And that is why you must learn how to do warfare with the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ was not given so that we will just say blood of Jesus you know, just like a cliche. Because we have reduced it to just a cliche. Do you understand that there was war in heaven? And in all their smartness, the only weapon they could use to kick that devil out was the blood of the Lamb. I'm saying, don't think too much. Don't try to cook up your own weapon. The weapons have been fabricated already. It was the same weapon they used in heaven. Whatever is a challenge in your life, you need to understand and build capacity and faith that is crystallized in your spirit, man, that if this weapon worked in heaven, this weapon can work on the earth. Doesn't matter how much the devil has come against you, has come against your children, has come against your business, your family, has come against your body. If you can engage the weapon of the blood of Jesus Christ, you will gain victory in the name of Jesus Christ. The problem is refuse to be a lazy Christian. Refuse to be a lazy Christian. You have what it takes to fight that devil off of your life. God was in heaven. God was on his throne. There was war in heaven. God didn't react. It was the angels that reacted. God has made you the God of this earth. If there is war in your life, if you don't react, God will do nothing. Amen? You have to fight. We live in a very terrible world. And since we realize that there is an old enemy, and that old enemy, the Bible told us exactly what he will do. How do I war with the blood of Jesus Christ? The first place, as a child of God, that you need to understand to use the blood of Jesus Christ for warfare is to use that blood to purge yourself. Amen? All of us here, you have been beaten in some way by that snake already. <laughs> the venom of that snake is working in some area of your life already. You need to purge. Listen to me. I study and I discover it's not many snakes that have the capacity to strike twice with their poison release. A snake, at best, he will strike once and release his poison and he has to go and rebuild and get back poison again. But that one strike, if you don't do anything about it, it the, and the attack of the venom of a snake is to go straight to our blood vessels. I told you before that I studied and I discovered the antidote for snake bite in the natural science used the blood of the physical lamb. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God that the blood of the sheep you see around, they extract it and they use it as what? An antidote or vaccine against snake bite in the natural. God is saying that same blood of the lamb does not only cure snake bite, 
but that same blood of the lamb can purge any poison that is residued in your soul, that is residued in your mind, that is residued in your business, that is residued in your career. Wherever that poison is lodged, you can take the blood. He told them in Exodus chapter 20, chapter 12, verse 21, 22. He said, you shall take his soap. And then I study and I discover, oh my God. You see, God is so wise. The Bible says he is the only wise God. In the natural, that plant called hyssop, so fragile, it has 10 medicinal values. And one of them, it has impact on your blood pressure. God says, in fact, just, he said, take blood, dip it in blood, and sprinkle it on your doorpost. Are you still here? We have what it takes. And I challenge that demonic poison in your system. By the blood of Jesus Christ, let it die today. Whatever has weakened your blood system, has weakened your confidence, your courage in life, your focus, let the blood be transmitted today and do damage to that wickedness in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Are you still here? Listen, the Bible says, take his up and then David gave us a better understanding in Psalm 51. He says, purge me with his soap and I will be clean. Purge me. There are things that the devil has left in you. Some people, he has left fear. He's no longer there. But the event that happened 10 years ago has left you with the poison of fear. He has left you. So now, no matter what you try to do, immediately you know it's going to fail. And because the Bible says, as a man, think it in his heart. So is he. Listen to me. When the Bible talks about the heart, it's not talking about these muscles that pump blood in your chest. No. In fact, if you study the word heart, it's subconsciousness. It is your sub-mind. It is your sub-mind. And you are sub-mind, there are many things there that you don't know. Amen? That is why the things that you have known, you are trying to work with them, is not working because you are being sponsored and piloted by the things lodged up in your sub subconsciousness. So that's why you are wondering, why am I like this? No, you are your subconsciousness. It is there, but the blood of Jesus will purge it out today. Why do I think different than other people? Why do I not change? I try to change this habit, that habit. How come it's not changing? There is something lodged in your subconsciousness. But the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14. Give me Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 14. Hallelujah. Are, are, are you here? Somebody say the blood of Jesus Christ. Let it purge me of every poison. Whatever poison is operating in my mind, in my body, in my soul, let the blood purge it out. Every bloodline weaknesses, let the blood of Jesus purge it out. Hallelujah. Every potential danger, every potential sickness, every potential disappointment that is lodged up in my subconsciousness, let the blood of Jesus purge it out. You say, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God, do what? Cleanse what? Your conscience from unprofitable works. Unprofitable works. Unprofitable investment. Unprofitable ventures. Everything I do dies. Everything I engage in, just a matter of time, it won't work. My business, my relationship, my, everything I do don't seem to work. What is it? I made up my mind. This is how I'm going to do this thing from now. Give it two weeks. It changes. What happened? Dead works. But the Bible says that it's something operating. In other words, uh, um, you know, when you buy a computer, <laughs> actually what you're buying is not that figure you see it is a hard drive is that right it is a hard drive that is actually the computer 
your heart, your conscience is your hard drive. If you download the blood of Jesus Christ, it will wipe out every programming that is by default. You know, there are certain things by default are already in the computer when you bought it. Your cell phone has a default download that is there. The possibilities are there. So you can have a cell phone today and decide not to have uh, Instagram or have Facebook. Uh, any day you want to bring Facebook to your phone, the reason why the app will be downloaded is because it is compatible. It was already built with the allowance in it. Hallelujah. Uh, but if your phone is the one that my grandfather used to have, <laughs> yeah, yes. Amen. Yeah, that, that one it didn't have a capacity to download anything. It's not possible. You were built with the capacity to download a lot of things and you have the capacity to wipe out. But it is not only you that can download things into your consciousness. Circumstances automatically will download things into your subconsciousness. Hallelujah. That person that doesn't like you at work, if you keep hanging around and bearing it without doing anything, you don't know they are downloading a particular way of reasoning into you that until you leave that job, one day you begin to manifest something and you are saying, where did this come from? Have you not have children? They left home good. Then they came back in the evening, they were coughing. They said, oh, they brought something from their school. When you move around in life, there are many things being downloaded into you. And if you investigate your life properly, you will discover that, no, this is not how I used to handle issues. This is not how I used to be able to stand strong no matter what hits me. But now life has decided to teach you a lesson that you don't always win and you believed it. And it's in your subconsciousness. Love has told you that when it gets rough, just give up. There are many opportunities. You don't have to stand it. Someone told me one day, he says, you know, because maintenance in America or repair in America is very, very tough, very expensive. So this system have learned not to repair things. They only replace things, including marriage. <laughs> don't fix it just replace don't work on it replace it and whether you like it or not that tendency has been built into your subconsciousness if you don't do anything using the blood of Jesus Christ your labor or investment in anything something is running underneath you saying if it doesn't work I will quit but the blood of Jesus is purging you today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I build back confidence into your subconsciousness. I build back faith into your subconsciousness. It says, use the blood of Jesus Christ to purge your conscience from dead works. From today, whatever I do will work. Say that. Whatever I do will work. Whatever I invest in will work. Whatever I turn my heart to do will work. Anything I'm involved in will work. Can you say that? Hallelujah. You are reprogramming your consciousness. I am not a failure. No way. My children can fail. My business cannot fail. My dreams cannot fail. Hallelujah. I am reprogramming myself. Why? The blood of Jesus will purge your conscience from dead works. I refuse to take something else as an option. Beside what I know is the will of God. It doesn't matter how long it takes. It doesn't matter. God does not want you to go for the option. Was Ishmael not a baby? Didn't God bless Ishmael? Have you not even noticed that Ishmael seems to be more powerful than Israel? How come God didn't take that as an option instead of Isaac? Even though Abraham gave him the opportunity. He says, hey, 
Can you just bless my servant? No. He said, how about Ishmael? You want me to bless your mistake? I will bless your mistake. God forbid that God blesses your mistake. <laughs> Be careful. Because God can bless your mistake. And your mistake will become the enemy of your destiny. Let the blood purge me from dead works. That is one first place you need the blood to war with. You need to engage the blood to purge your conscience. What else can the blood do in your conscience? Do you need the blood of Jesus to purge your conscience from bitterness? Many things have left you with the poison of bitterness. You may not know until a situation comes up. Esau didn't know that the way the mother was treating Jacob at home had brought bitterness into his soul. If you read Hebrews chapter 12, the Bible says you should be careful and be very diligent to follow after Christ. Otherwise, there will be a root of bitterness springing out and it will trouble you in life. Then he gave us an example like Esau. I'm like, how? The Lord said, because Esau felt he was not loved by his mother. He was the one going out to hunt all the time. And Jacob was at home. It injected bitterness within him he didn't know. When he came back from hunting, come on please. If you're a hunter, there is one thing you would have been good at. Hunger should not be a problem for you. What will make a hunter say, what, I'm so hungry. Just give me soup. What is this birthright to me? If you don't purge your spirit, your subconsciousness, you will take soup instead of your destiny. That business that you're supposed to be in business, you will rather take a job. Instead of your purpose. Because there's something inside you. Delays can create bitterness. The Bible says, hope defies make the heart sick. So I've been waiting for the promise of God. And it's not coming. Well, whatever comes now, I will take it. If as long as it looks like it can wear pants, I will just marry it. Because of delays. Bitterness, bitterness, bitterness inside. But let the blood of Jesus purge you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Offenses can introduce bitterness inside of you. And it, you know you're a very complex being. I was hoping that I would write that book this year, but uh, time didn't let me to write that book. What is man? There's so much in it that uh, my mind can't even capture all of it. But you are such a complex being that there is so much that has been downloaded into you. You know, when you were born, you came out with a blank mind. Amen? Glory be to God. You know, this lady here, this young boy, if they had decide to give me this boy and adopted him to my house, and then for some reason they agreed that we should move to Nigeria. After 10 years, when I come back with this boy... Even though he will be speaking, yeah, yeah, they. Uh, uh, how far? Ah, uh, now, waiting up. <laughs> Do you understand that? Because the environment would have downloaded something into his consciousness. Where you live has downloaded things. If you don't use the blood, you'll be surprised. You will grow to become somebody. And you will have to introduce yourself to yourself again. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
That is why you must be careful. That little girl you marry will not remain a little girl. That little young man you marry will not remain a little young man. Something is happening. If you don't know how to engage the blood, something is happening. You will wake up one day and like, what happened? That's not who I married. No, you are right. The issue is that many downloads took place. But the blood has to purge it out. Offenses. Use the blood to war against. You know why God is focusing on you? Because until you are whole, you can't do anything else. Yeah, you have to purge yourself of those weaknesses, those tendencies. You have to purge yourself. Otherwise, the poison. You know, Paul was on his journey. He escaped a massive disaster in the sea. But that devil was still after Apostle Paul. In Acts chapter 28, the Bible says they arrived at a place. Favor was given them. All of a sudden, they set wood on fire to warm themselves. This evil snake jumped out and fastened itself on Apostle Paul. Somebody say, shake it off. Shake it off. By the blood, I shake it off. Whatever has beaten me in life, I shake it off. That disappointment is affecting me, I shake it off. That last fight is affecting me up until now, I shake it off by the blood of Jesus Christ. That shame, that issue is tempering with your destiny by the blood, I shake it off today. Glory be to God. Yes, they rejected me, I shake it off. I refuse to allow that poison to stick with me. That is not who I am. I have been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. I shake it off. Are you still here? In Numbers chapter 21 and verse 4. Numbers 21 and verse 4. How much... See, Amaka is looking at Rema. So, who is the f at fault? <laughs> okay. Amara says it's Amaka. Then they journeyed from where? From Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And what happened? And the soul of the people did what? Became discouraged on the way. It's the children of Israel. They were pursuing the promise of God. They were heading to their promised land. In your journey... To arrive at the plan and the purpose of God for your life. Listen to me. You will incur discouragements on the way. The timing of God is not the timing of man. Are you with me? The timing of God is not the timing of man. These people were on their way to the promised land. God was leading them. God was doing miracles. But that did not stop discouragement. Because on this side, remember, they told us already. They were laughing in heaven. And then, they, in fact, God even allows us to see how much. He said, woe unto you people <laughs> that are on the earth. Now, read the next verse. Their soul was discouraged. Now, listen to me. Your body might not be discouraged because you still wake up and go to work. But let, don't deceive yourself. You can be walking strongly with your six pack, but your soul is one pack. <laughs> don't, don't let six pack on the outside deceive you. That person might be one pack on the inside. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. It says, and the people did what? Discouragement will make you disrespect God. <laughs> ha, yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody say, Lord, help us. They spoke against God and against Pastor Jeff. Yeah, some of you do that. <laughs> anyway, let's not go there. Why have, we, why have you brought us? Why did you even start this church, self? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Every time we pray, 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 What is, can't we do anything else? Why are you still always praying, 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 praying? They spoke against. <laughs> 
<laughs> Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food. When your soul is discouraged, you might be eating and still think and say you're not eating. Amen? You now, you see, you see, you know, as a pastor, many times you sit down with husband and wife and you will hear phrases like, what, your, what have you ever done for me? <laughs> All these years, what have you ever done for me? He has never, pastor, you will not believe it though. Don't let his praying in church. You see, this man is so weak, he has not done anything for me. Uh -uh. When your soul is discouraged, you will utter things that don't make sense. Not only that, they were eating angels' food. That which is unique, and yet because their soul was discouraged, they were despising the supernatural. Some of you, what is holding you is not your job. What is holding you is not your insurance. What is holding you is not money. What is holding you is not your age. It is the supernatural that is holding you. But if you are not careful, the devil will manipulate your mouth to be speaking against the supernatural work of God in your life. And you begin to blame everything around you. Curse your job and wake up on Monday morning and still go there. Curse your marriage and still wake up on December and like, oh, oops, I'm still here. You know, but when your soul is discouraged, your mouth will say things. Their soul got discouraged. Not that they were going in the wrong direction. Just the fact that you're in the will of God doesn't mean your soul will not get discouraged. You just have to be. Hallelujah. You know, one of the things that I have to fight all the time, I have to fight coming here on Wednesday with two people sitting down in the sanctuary. I have to fight on Sunday hoping that if I stay all night, at least somebody will come and hear what God has given me to preach. I am on the path of my destiny. But my soul, every now and then, I have to fight. Lord, please, I want to stay through. I want to fulfill the purpose. They were on their way to the destiny and they began to speak against God and began to speak against Moses. And then God did something. Put the scripture up. What happened? It says, there's no food and our soul does what? Lost this what? This worthless job. This worthless. Worthless marriage. Meanwhile, you did 72 days prayer and fasting to be married. Now it is worthless. These worthless children, when would they give me rest? This worthless career. Meanwhile, God saw you through. You still have loans to pay, but it has become worthless now. <laughs> they were eating angels. The Bible says a man ate angels' food. They didn't have to buy new shoes. They didn't have to buy new clothes. They didn't need to go to war graves. No. What they were eating kept them agile. The Bible says there was no feeble amongst them. But when the soul is discouraged. So the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, it says that looking unto Jesus, the author, give me Hebrews 12, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down on the right side of God, the majesty. Is that right? Now, give me verse 4 of that scripture and see something. It says, no, you have not resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin. Uh-huh. No, give me verse 3. For consider him. Somebody say consider. Consider who? Consider Jesus. Who did what? Who endured such hostility from sinners against himself. What happened? Otherwise, you'll be what? Where? In your biceps. If you don't consider Jesus... 
you will be driving every day doing your business, but your soul has depleted. That's why the warrior David, he says in Psalm 23, Lord, restore my soul. Somebody say, Lord, restore my soul. I, I, I've come into a new week. Lord, restore my soul. Hallelujah. I, I, have you noticed that you will still have to go to work tomorrow even though, thank God it was Friday. How many thank God is Friday have you said? <laughs> and how many, oh Lord, it's Monday. <laughs> if you don't learn how your soul needs to be replenished, you will live in that cycle of a discordant soul. But the Bible told us, looking unto Jesus, the author, that there was somebody who endured who endure. Discouragement needs to be purged out of you by the blood of Jesus Christ. And this scripture takes us to the last point this morning. It says that he was, he endured hostility. I think it was verse, verse 4. Give us Hebrews chapter 4. Let me show another place where you need to engage the blood for warfare. What does it say? Hebrews 12. You have not resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin. He told us that because the one he asked us to look onto, he capped it. You have not, you have not broken sweat about that matter, yet you are giving up. Somebody sweat blood, he didn't give up. One of the power of the blood of Jesus Christ is to break your human will. To break and make sure that your human will doesn't fight the will of God for your life. Because life will want you to move in a direction of your own will. That even Jesus Christ on this side of heaven, who sat down and read the contract, you are coming down, and this is what is going to happen. They are going to mess with you. They are going to accuse you. They are going to betray you. But this is the glory for you. When he came and had this flesh. Matter of fact, this was not the type of flesh he had. The Bible says his own was a prepared body. <laughs> Amen. Yet, he got discouraged. He got tired. So the blood that first came from Jesus Christ in the garden of Gethsemane was to subdue the will of man so that your natural will doesn't fight against the will of God. Are you here? It is important for us to learn that the blood will purge my conscience. Number two, the blood of Jesus Christ, I engage it against any battle of the mind. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers. It says, and against everything that exhausts itself against the knowledge of God, what do we do? We cast it down. Anything that is exalting itself against the will of God in your life, you break it down by engaging. Why is it important? Because you are a special being by salvation, your destiny can only be glorious if you align yourself to the will of God. Amen? That is it. Stop fighting your destiny. Stop fighting what God has created for you. Some of you, God has put you in a situation right now for you to think right. For you to make the adjustment. And yet, your adjustment is that you want to look for another type of situation that look like the one he brought you out because you still don't want to align to the will of God. <laughs> Amen? Yeah, many times he has delivered you and put you in a very serious place for you to not think right, and yet you went back to the same, you're still looking for a job. You're still looking for a boyfriend. You're still looking for a girlfriend. He said, no, no, no. Can you sit down and think a little bit so that I can align you properly? You need the blood to war against the battle of the mind. 
that thing that keeps telling you you won't make it, let the blood of Jesus Christ fight it off of me in the name of Jesus. That thing that keeps telling you that you will fail again, you need the blood of Jesus to fight it off. Glory be to God. That thing that tells you you will die prematurely, you need the blood of Jesus Christ to wipe it out. Glory be to God. Are you still here? When this, all of this battle happens, it is important for us to know that the title of the, of the devil is an accuser. Is that right? See, if you know the position of Satan, then it will help you to know the type of prayers to pray and also what you need God to help you with. Is that right? Uh, anytime there is a court situation and then um, a verdict is being given. There are two lawyers in the house, so I'm being careful. Uh, <laughs> amen? But there is something, uh, sir, they do. For instance, what is that thing that if they, they, maybe somebody secures judgment in their favor and they want to make sure that uh, the person who loses the case doesn't temper with them. There's something they do to, to create a boundary around that person so that what is the word for it? Restriction? Restraint. Is that a restraint? Restraint order. Such that the person, individual doesn't do what? Doesn't come close like, like 100 miles. Right? What is the reason for that? Sir, what, why do you give restraining orders? A protected space. Huh. When you use the blood of Jesus Christ and secure your victory, you need something to secure your space. Amen? Because he's an accuser. And because he's an accuser, he will come back again. And let me tell you something. Did you ever hear again somebody asking Obama where is his birth certificate? Huh? Did you ever hear it again? No, no right? Uh -huh. Let Obama ask to become a president again. They will ask again. You think you are free now until you ask for promotion. <laughs> that is when Satan will travel into your intestines and check what you ate 72 years ago. You want to get married? That is when Satan will bring an accusation you don't deserve to be married. You want peace? As long as there's trouble, he will lie low. But if you want to go up, accusation will rise again. You must understand the operation of Satan. He's what? An accuser. And he doesn't want to lose any battle. So what God does is that this woman in Revelation chapter 12, the Bible says after she was secured, the Bible says she was given two great wings of an eagle. Somebody say, Lord, give me two great wings of an eagle. Remember that snake wanted to eat or lost to eat the eggs of an eagle. Because he knows that once you become an eagle you can escape and soar, not fly. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, give me two great wings of an eagle. I have secure peace in my business. I have secure peace in my career. I have secure good health now. I need God to make sure he barricades me with the two great wings of an eagle. Otherwise, the enemy will come back. And if the devil comes, I don't care how you cross your T's and dot your eyes. He is a very serious investigator. He will find something. He will find that 15 years ago, when you were working in that company, you came late, but you lied that you didn't come late. You think it is not of any consequence until you want to rise. Satan will bring it up. 
And just because, sir, if there's a case against me and I'm not aware, does that vindicate me? Huh? I don't know. Is that not? Am I not free? So ignorance of an accusation doesn't mean innocence. Until the day the police pulls you over. And then they will, you know how <laughs> they know the address that you live. Where, oh Jesus Christ. They will pull everything. Pastor Dom told me that they will, <laughs> they shake and they will know that you ran away from California. I say, huh? Eh? You want to get a license in Texas? They will, Pastor Dominic is one of them, so please. <laughs> <laughs> He's one of the people. So be careful when you go to Pastor Dominic's office. He will know what he see. What if you ate a bar last night? He will know. <laughs> He's laughing at you, but he's doing his computer like this. I say, ah ah, now wow. <laughs> the enemy is an accuser. So the Bible says they use the blood. You need to use the blood. To fight off every accusation levied against you. Every day you want to be lifted. You want promotion. If, you know, once there's a case against you, if it is a business, if it concerns a building, they will lock up that building because of the case, right? Until you win the case, they can open up your building. If you discover that any area of your life is locked up, there's a case against you. I want to go back to school. It's not working. There's a case against you. I want to get married. It's not working. My marriage is not working. There's a case against you. Satan is saying there is a contract that was established many, many years ago. And in that contract, my own deal is that no marriage should work in this family. Why should your own work? Let the blood fight for me. Do you understand what I'm saying? You use the blood. Nobody has ever risen. Everyone has to end in this particular way. That is, you see, your family lineage is your prophetic life. Check your family. is prophecy. If you don't like it, work on it. If you like it, check if it was powered by a natural means or spiritual means. Because just because everybody in your family became an engineer doesn't mean you becoming an engineer will make you great. No. As a child of God, you must study to see where accusations have been levied and are buried underneath. So that you can fight now. Don't wait until the case mounts up. Is that right? You know, if it's a ticket and you go and pay it off immediately, it's gone, right? If you refuse to pay it, it does what? The day you decide that, oh, I just discovered that uh, I have uh, this thing. Oh, they say, okay, well, when you were dormant, your case was not dormant. Your case was growing. Somebody say, I plead the blood. The Bible speaks about lawful captivity in life. There's a captivity that is a lawful captivity. In other words, you are guilty. Well, I didn't do anything. Your great-grandfather did it. In the realm of the spirit, it is the same blood. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. Somebody say, I plead the blood over my destiny. I plead the blood over my children. I plead the blood over my family. I plead the blood over the works of my hands. I will not end like my father. I will not end like my grandfather. I will not end like my great-great-grandfather. I am exempted by the blood. When the blood came upon them in Egypt, they were exempted. Glory be to God. There is something called the covenant of exemption. 
I speak it over your life today. You are exempted. You are exempted. You are exempted. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the blood, you will not be a victim of every or any evil covenant that you we are not part of. And even if you were part of, by the blood of Jesus Christ, you are redeemed today. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. The reason why you can be guilty is because finally, listen to me, even if you didn't sin, there is something called bloodline sin. Apart from bloodline sin, there is something called territorial sin. Apart from territorial sin, there is something called the sin of the nation. Lot was a righteous man, according to scriptures, but he lost his wife because of the territory. <laughs> Amen? There are, the realm of the spirit is very, very strict. If you're, that's why the Bible says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You have to be a spiritual FBI individual. Investigate your life properly and use the blood of Jesus Christ. It is so powerful. The Bible says that blood bought us from every tribe, from every nation, from every culture, from every people. That blood is so powerful, it doesn't matter if you are from the most wicked tribe. That blood is powerful to redeem you. If it bought you, it can maintain you. Stand to your feet. If that blood bought you, that blood can maintain your life. Father, we ask you today, let the blood purge my conscience. Pray that prayer. Let the blood purge my conscience. Let the blood purge me. Let the blood purge my conscience. And let the blood uh, strengthen my will to do the will of God. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, I engage uh, the blood uh, to purge my conscience. Uh, I engage the blood uh, to build my willpower. And finally, every accusation against my life against my lifting. Are you praying? Every accusation uh, that has trapped my life, uh, that has trapped my destiny, the reason why my life in this area is not moving, because of any evil accusation. Uh, let the blood free me. Let the blood vindicate you. I plead the blood over you today. I plead the blood over your children. I plead the blood over your career. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ uh, over your marriage. Uh, I plead the blood over your children. Let him let the blood rescue you. Let the blood deliver you. Let the blood fight for you. The Bible says they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of that testimony. Father, we thank you. We give you praise and we give you glory. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you guys so much for listening to this message. We do hope you were truly blessed by it. Please don't forget to like this video, comment, subscribe, share with people, friends, family, colleagues, everyone around you. And also don't forget to turn on your post notification bell. It's right here so that you can get notified whenever we post a video. Thank you guys so much once again and do have a blessed week. Bye-bye.